So if that means me wearing a pair of glittery Merry Christmas pants, I'll do it. There's nothing that Daniel Dubois does really to throw Nathan off, you know. I just fully believe I'll end the hype train. I really do. 40 tournament, 40 knockouts, and then get me a world title against the man who's 50 year old. Welcome to BT Sport Boxing, I'm Rob Armstrong, and today we're at Hatton's Gym and I'm joined by Tommy Fury and Nathan Gorman. What was it, Leicester was meant to be on February 23rd, that's been moved back a month to March the 23rd. How was that when you found out, were you, were you annoyed? Uh, just, you know, it's not, it's not what we planned for, we were training hard, you know, it was a hard camp for us uh, and we was, all, we was obviously winding down uh, and then we got the news, so... You know, it wasn't what we expected, but you know, it's kicking the teeth, but you've got to get, get on with it, aren't you, at the end of the day and keep training and keep preparing. Yeah, were you ready and raring to go? Because obviously it, was, it only got uh, moved back with like a week to go, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, we obviously, we found out on the Wednesday, <clears throat> so we've only had a couple more hard days left in the gym. So really, we only had the wind up, the fight week. So it was raring to go, you know, everything was done, all the sparring was done, everything, everything was all boxed off. And, but on one hand, it's boxing, you expect injury, so it's only an extra month of training, isn't it? <laughs> And Tommy, obviously you're, you're relatively new to this, that was your debut. How has it been for you since then, sort of getting into the, the routine of, of being a professional boxer? It's happened now, you're there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what I've been looking forward to in my whole life at the end of the day. I knew it was going to come one day um, and we're there now. So, you know, there's, there, there's, no, there's no negatives about being a professional boxer. You know, I get to come in every day and do what I enjoy. I come in the gym, you know, I spar one day, I do my strength and conditioning. It's all something that I've been doing, you know, ever since I was a little child. So to come in and do it day in and day out and get paid for it, smiles all around, eh? Is it easier saying no to the sort of temptations of, of everyday, everyday life? Now you've got that one uh, fight under your belt, you think, no, I'm a professional now. I don't do these things. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't know, believe me, I still like a Big Mac now and then, but uh, it's, it's, a lot, it's still hard to say no. <laughs> but um, yeah, it is what it is. You've got to look at the bigger picture at the end of the day, but you're going to risk it for a burger with a bit of lettuce on it. You got um, you got one monitoring camp. You've got to, you know you've got to train hard. You've got to put it all in because if you don't, it will show in your performances. So uh, yeah, you just you just got to look towards fight night at the end of the day with them distractions. But I don't get distracted anyway. I just eat, sleep, and train, and I've got all positive energy around me. So uh, it's all it's all good. Yeah, and Nathan, you're you're 16 fights in, only 20 years old. 22 years 22. old. Sorry, yeah. 22. <laughs> you're aging backwards. 22 years old. And uh, somehow you're still the veteran in this relationship between you two. 22 year old vet. I know it's mad, isn't it? 16 fights in already. You know, um, three years have been pro. Turned pro same age as Tommy. 19 fights. Obviously, I started off on the small shows. You know, um, Tommy's been fortunate. He's had you know BT Sport from day one, so he can only grow off that. I've had to work my way up. You know, learn the trade. Then they got to me 10th fight, and then uh, here we are today. You know, I'm boxing on BT Sport show, so I'm a veteran now, and I. Do you have to give him little bits of advice? Listen to me, Tom. I'm 22 years yeah, old. Yeah, take him under my wing I've and stuff. You know, I've been, I've been there, proper veteran. <laughs> take him under my wing and stuff. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy having that sort of relationship in camp? Because we see, you know, we, we see fighters. Some of them, you know, it's just the the coach and the fighter, and then some of them we see camps where, you know, like Ben and Tyson. It's pretty much Ben, Tyson, and Isaac. And then we see Jamie Moore's camp and there's five or six of them and they've got a great atmosphere. Do you like having loads of people around? Yeah, gym? yeah, without a doubt, you know, um, everyone in this gym here gets along, you know, we all push each other on. There's always laughs and smiles every, every time we come in here. And I, to be fair, I prefer it like that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it if it was just one-to-one -one because it, there's not much of an atmosphere, there's not much crack in the gym. I'd much prefer it when you come in and all the boys are having, you know, joke, joking and t taking the piss out of each other. I'd much prefer that. Do you get competitive as well? <laughs> well, I don't know, to be honest with you. Oh, he does, he if does. I've got the energy in the tank, yeah, maybe. If I want to throw a bit more punches, but uh, that's on a good day when the sun's shining, which is uh, once in a blue moon. <laughs> you know, uh, Nathan, you know, Tommy's a bit angry about your blue tick on Instagram as well. You have to sort it out for him, wouldn't you? Yeah, I've, to, I've, been, I've been asking for weeks. Sorry, I, think you just, I think you just Sorry. do it yourself. I think you just go on and apply for ah, it. Well, Nathan, you've got to tell him how to do it. Yeah, how I, did I, you get yours, I, mate? I, I didn't do it. You've been really. sending them off on you every day. <laughs> you email them 24 7. Yeah. <laughs> so, come up to uh, March 23rd. Obviously, you, neither of you have a, an official opponent yet, but have you got some ideas that you've got? Yeah, I think I've got um, another fellow from Latvia. I think uh, he can normally box at cruiserweight. Uh, he's around six foot one or two, you know, just. At my stage, you know, it's, it's more about just learning in myself at the end of the day, because most of the opponents I have now, you know, they're, they're pretty much going to come and do the same thing, you know, they're going to try and win, win, win a little bit, throw a few shots, you know, they're going to do the same sort of thing. So it's just about me 
learning from each fight and handling the style better and better each time we get in the ring. But as in Nathan's case, he's you know he's, he's tipping towards that that world level because as you say, his last fight he fought a world top ranked opponent, so he's he's studying his opponent more, like looking what his opponent's going to do because mine is going to pretty much do the same thing. So. And Nathan, obviously, it's looking to be a pretty big year for you with, Definitely. with fights sort of coming into the scene at you know, potentially that next level fight. But on the 23rd, are you looking for sort of a, a knockout? Because I know after the Kojinu fight, you were a little bit, it, you know, you, you got a convincing points win, but you seemed a little bit downhearted that yeah, backstage. Yeah, yeah, of course, because at the end of the day, everyone wants a knockout reel, doesn't they? You know, it's nice to get a stoppage because it gets people talking about you, and that's what I'm looking to do on the, the Leicester show. Um, we've got a few names in mind, but nothing confirmed yet. But, you know, I'm training really hard in the gym and open up to do a performance. After that first fight, Tommy, uh, you obviously had your first taste of what well, I guess is we're in the first few years of, of like the modern boxing fan where everyone's on Twitter or whatever abusing you if you don't get a first round knockout or whatever. <laughs> and I think you probably had your first uh, your first couple of haters, didn't you, to deal with? Oh, you know, don't you? I mean, it's, it is what it is at the end of the day. I don't know what half of them, don't, they don't get to me anyway at the end of the day because a passing comment means nothing to me, to me. But if we're looking at it, you know, from a realistic perspective, I don't know what more people want at the end of the day. You know, I'm 19 years of age, I've had 12 amateur fights. They was all in small shows, never entered the ABAs or nothing like that. And I've, and I've come on the scene. I've boxed on such a big bill, you know, all this so-called pressure. And he'd fought all types of people, every everyone. Ryan Rose, Tony Bell, I'm pretty sure he's, he's, he's fought. Tony Bell, you went six rounds with him. So I don't know what they're looking for. And they say, you know, I can't punch this and that. If Tony Bell, has gone six rounds with him and he's considered a massive puncher, then I don't know what they're expecting at the end of the day. It's, they're asked, they're, they're, just because of the last name, they think, oh, he's going to be this, he's going to be that, he's going to be this, he's going to be that. I'm here to do the best that I can, not the best, you know, living up to anybody else is the best what I can do. I think you're right in that you, you're in a bit of a, a rare position in that your first fight was televised. You know, n normally when you see someone who's first fight televised, it's like they've come off the back of winning a gold medal yeah, or something sure, in the yeah. Olympics yeah. and people expect to see big things. And then yeah. you, like you say, 19 years old, completely fresh in the game and, yeah. and you still got the points victory. Like, maybe your, your second fight was points, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, my second fight was points And victory. then no one would ever doubt your... Exactly, it's just experience, isn't it, at the end of the day. Like, like Tommy just previously said, these men, these journeymen, that that's what they're there to do. They're there to do a job, you know. If they've had 150 fights and I think they've been stopped two or three times. Come on, that's some percentage not to get stopped. So if you stop it, you stop them. You have a very lucky punch or you're a mammoth puncher. And uh, they know, like you said, they know the way around the ring. They're there to do a job and survive, so they can so they can get out the next week and get have another fight and get paid. How many fights are you looking to have this year, Tommy? Uh, hopefully, hopefully about ten. I want to be very, very, very busy. If it was up to me, I'd be fighting every other week, because as they say, the old saying, practice <laughs> makes perfect. And the day, so the more the fight, the more the more you fight, the more you'll get better. So this time next year. Oh, it'd, it'd, yeah, it'd be knock on knock on the door title levels, definitely, you know, British or something, 100%. Hopefully. The, the, way, the, way, the way he's improving in the gym and stuff, you know, he's, uh, he's tucked to it like a duck to water. Um, he's only been here for probably been six months. Something like that, six yeah. Six months and he's tucked to it like a duck to water, so it's very very promising future, Tommy's got. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sorry, obviously, your, your, your dad, John, is here in the gym all the time. He's saying uh, Nathan is uh, next world champion. You agree with him? 100%, 100%. Have you, have you, uh, <laughs> what, <Tom? laughs> yeah, uh, have you ever seen a heavyweight, yeah, with speed like that before? You just, look what he did to Sean Turner. Sean Turner, yeah, is, he is, he is a good fighter, he's a class fighter, and he just made him look like that was his first fight. It's all about levels, this game, and in the, especially in the heavyweight division, you can't just rely on, on power, which, of, which a lot of heavyweights do. Nathan's got the speed, he's got the agile, he's, he can move. His last opponent, Con, Conardu, whatever it was, he went 12 rounds with Parker. And Park is a world champion. He's fought him, he's, he's, tw he's 22, and that was his, what was it, 16th fight? 15th. 15th fight. So, and Park was making a title defence. So you've got, you've, got, you've, got to, you've got to look at the facts. For me, my money, Nathan's going all the way, 100%. And Nathan, Nathan is... Checks in the post, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> he's your new PR guy. <laughs> yeah. He's the new Don <laughs> <Good luck>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of Kajanu, uh, <laughs> your, your old pal, my Daniel old, Dubois, is buddy. fighting him. Yeah. Are you going to be looking at that and thinking, I'll comparing be, the two I'll, performances? I'll be there, yes. I'll be there ringside and I will be comparing, yeah. 
Um, it's a two-way street, this fight. I've heard this in previous interviews. Daniel could go out, which I hope he does, and catches him cold in the first couple of rounds. Or Kajano could use the survival tactics, you know, um, lean on him, smother his work, and Daniel could end up gassing midway through. So it's a two-way street, this fight. How convinced are you by Dubois? Because obviously everyone's well on board the, the hype train with him. But then <laughs> his, uh, his last fight against Johnson, he went the distance for the first time. Yeah. And so I guess people always thought he was going to be, like we were speaking out before, he's always going to be knockout after knockout after knockout. But it doesn't happen like that, does it? Nine no, boxing. It doesn't. Um, listen, he's a good fighter, but I just fully believe I'll end the hype train. I really do. There's no doubt in my mind. And Frank Warren is talking about that happening this year. Judging from your exchanges on Twitter, I think you're ready for it oh, tomorrow, that, aren't you? Yeah, without a doubt, tonight. Tonight. Yeah, is that it? That's happening tonight. We're going to go outside. <laughs> go outside Hatton's gym. Go bring it. Go bring him. I'll get on tonight. <laughs> do, you, do you see that as a fight that Nathan, it, it's one of the things that people are talking about with the young British talents and Nathan versus Daniel. The fact that it's aligned that they're both sort of similar ages, similar records already. You. you yeah, obviously you're going to say, yeah, you think that's Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. No, but do you see that as a fight that goes easily for Nathan or is it a, a, a hard fight? No, I, um, that fight, I'm not just saying it because he's sat here next to me. I genuinely believe that fight will, will be an easy fight for him because there's nothing that Daniel Dubois does really to throw Nathan off. You know, if we're being serious about it, what, what does he do? He comes forward, you know, he throws a one-two, a couple of hooks and that's about, that's about it, really. He has, you know, he doesn't really move his head. He's, he, you know, he's... He's just a simple, basic heavyweight, really, isn't he, at the end of the day. But he's a big puncher at the end of the day, so you've got to be cautious. You can't go in there thinking, this is going to be an easy fight, you know, he's going to walk all over me, this and that, because he, he could put your lights out in seconds. He's a big man. If you, get, if you get hit with anybody over 15 stone on the chin, you're going down. So what's a big man going to do to you like that? So you've always got to be cautious about it. But yeah, for sure, I, I see Nathan winning that easy, convincingly as well. Anytime. Nathan, who do you want to fight this year? If you could pick three fighters this year, obviously you say you think you can beat anyone in the world, but yeah, yeah. you know, in in terms of a natural progression that that Ricky will let you have, who do you think it will be? Obviously, Daniel. That's uh, if I could pick any fight in the world, I'd pick him. You know, um, three fights. Uh, no, I'd like to get the European title this year. That Ajit uh, Gabel is it? And the third one, who else would I pick? Hmm. Manuel Cha. Yeah, I'd have him as well. You'd have to, you'd have to get Fraser Quendo out of the way of his four-year mandatory. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. If I could pick them three, that's what it'd be. Yeah, and that would, that would be a, a huge unit, and that's probably announcing oh, massive, yourself on the next level. Massive, you know. Obviously, Manuel Char, world champion. Um, Daniel, you know, there's a lot of hype behind Daniel. And Adi Gable, very good fighter again, European European champion. You know, these are, these are the fights I want. And the thing with the Daniel one as well is he is obviously under the Frank Warren banner, Same banner, uh, banner yeah. as well. Same so. Banner. so it's, it's not one of those that, uh, unfortunately, tell me your, your family knows only too well. It's not one of the ones that's going to fall under this sort of boxing politics and promoters and networks and things like that. That, is a, that yeah. is a fight that can happen. Yeah, it's not going to be very hard to make, is it? You know, it's very easy, very easy to happen. You know, we've both got the same promoter. You know, uh, all we have to do is pick up a phone call. And it'll be done within a, an hour or so. On our, on, our, on our behalf, anyway, definitely. And on the subject of, uh, of these kind of promoters and networks and everything. Tyson, obviously, last week signing that deal with ESPN. Is that, uh, you, you both know him, he trains here in Hatton's gym when he's, uh, when he's got his fights in Britain. Is that exciting for you? Are you looking forward to the future for him? Yeah, of course. I mean, you couldn't have got a better deal, really, could you? I mean, he's got a home now in BT Sport over here, and then he's got ESPN over there, which is probably the big, is the thing, it is the biggest sporting network yeah. over there, isn't it? So I think now he's, they're treating him for what he is, the best fighter on the planet. The performance that he put up against Wilder the first time, they know then just off that, you know, what if if the biggest punching heavyweight that's probably ever been can hit him flush with the right hand and then follow up with the left hook and make him cold out on the floor, yeah? Not getting up. Just gets up like that, comes back to win the round, let alone only hurt Wilder. How how do you beat this man? How do you do it? You can't if you can you tell me how to beat him? Uh, no. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just sitting here talking. Right, literally, you can't. I, he, he can do, I couldn't tell you how to beat anything. What, what, whatever he can do, whatever. Like he can, he can, he could skate around the ring for 25 rounds. He could put his hands up and go forward, have a dog fight with you. 
he can do, he's a full package Tyson and that's that's what you need to become an elite fighter a great fighter and that's what he is he's, he's got everything about him and you know I think he can reign for how, however long he wants to reign it's, it's completely up to him because I think the only man out there to beat him is himself um, but as you can see and everyone else can see coming off what he's been doing in the past <laughs> he's, he's there and he's there to stay so all these other weight, heavyweights are just keeping the belts warm, to be honest. Do you feel like he's a good measuring stick for someone who's trying to get to the top of the heavyweight game? 100%. You know, That's he, how you keep yourself yeah, in check. exactly. <laughs> he's been there, done it. He's the current lineal heavyweight champion of the world. In my opinion, he's the best heavyweight on the planet. So that is the measuring stick. I know exactly what it takes and what I've got to do to get to where in, in his position. And so that's the heavyweight division. <coughs> Tell me, your division. Who are you looking at? You were saying earlier, you were joking about saying, uh, yeah, 50-year-old Kevlev, you'll have him. That's what you're yeah, 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 I'll just have, yeah, I'll just have all the good champions from the past in the wheelchair. That'll do, get me them. No problem. Make myself look proper good then, won't I? <laughs> That's it, 40 journeymen then, 50-year-old Kevlev. Yeah, That's do. the plan. 40 journeymen, 40 knockouts, and then get me a world title against the man who's 50-year-old. Win it. There we go. Are you, are, you, are you starting to weigh up sort of future fights? Obviously, you're so, you're so young in the sport and... and can't get too far ahead of yourself, and I'm sure Ricky wouldn't let you. Who, who do you look at? You'd see like, oh, that could be a real super fight in the future. I mean, I, I don't know. It is at my stage in the career now. I'm just taking every fight one step at a time because I'm just living every day as it comes. Really, you know, you can't. I don't really plan in towards the future. I'm just planning now on March 23rd. You, you, you can easily take your mind off the job, you know, with what's going on. Now you're doing these interviews. You this, you that, you box on the BT Sport. You, you, your head could easily, easily wander. But you've got to keep your head on your shoulders at all times and you've got to keep your feet on the floor. I've got my second fight coming up and I'm just trying to do the best that I can in every fight. And I'm not looking, I'm not calling anybody names, I'm not slagging anybody off because it's, it's, it's not my style at the end of the day. Except you know, Dubois. Yeah, I set the bar. Simple come forward fight. It'd be a different story if you came here in my face, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, no, you've just got, it's, it's, boxing's a fun sport, and you just yeah. got to take every day as it comes. Big fights come, they come great, but uh, my next stop is March 23rd, Leicester, so we'll talk after that. Has he been good at keeping his head on his shoulders? Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. He definitely has. He's a very um, well-grounded young man, you know. Uh, he does everything what's to be been said, you know. Everything he's done, he's ticked all the boxes so far. And he's a very, very well-grounded family, well, the full family, you know, his dad, he's got his dad behind him. He ain't going to go far wrong with his dad in his corner, is he? So he just keeps listening. It's the world, the world is oyster, isn't it, Tom? Hopefully. I mean, we'll see. It's up to me to put the hard work in, but as I say, you know, got a great team behind me, got my dad, you know, my family, just uh, watch me every move, make sure, you know, every, pinpoint everything's on the way it should be. So um, I can't, really can't see any, any issue with me going forward. You know, it's all up to me now. I've got the platform there. Everything is put in place for me. I always laugh when, when I saw Tommy in uh, in Fight Week in Manchester. He's the only boxer I've ever seen. Like really, really pleased to be at all the different events. <laughs> like Fight Week is never the easiest, is it? I don't. Yeah. Feel, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Tommy was buzzing every time he was anywhere. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> at the press conference, rip the shirt off, <laughs> turn, turn up to the weigh-in, glittery pants. That's how he is, twenty-four-seven, <laughs> constantly happy in your tongue. It's like I said in the interview. It's like I had an interview the other day, and I said it. You've got to make. There's, there's so many fighters out there, right? Every, you know. Half the country's a fighter. You've got to, you've got to do something different. You've got to, you know, act a bit different. You've got to do something out the norm. So if that means me wearing a pair of glittery Merry Christmas pants, I'll do it. And you want to see the pair I've got for the next way? I can I can hear John Fury laughing in the background here. Uh, entrance music. Ah yes, uh, entrance music. It's genuine pony. You've got to, you've got to come out to this it now. Is now you said it. This he's is got this. To do it now. I'm telling you now. Yeah, it was this. indecisive one he had too. Now he's got to do it. This is this is going to get memes on this all year round. You want to see the entrance I'm going to put on? I'm going to be. I'm going to swing in from a rope. How's that? He's coming out, baby. All what he is, Tommy. Oiled up, everything, Vaseline up, everything. <laughs> you've got to go out and do him now, though, Nathan. What have you got planned? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'll pick it up on the week. I really don't know. You know, um, we'll see. We'll see on the week. I got nothing planned. I just get in there and have a fight. Nathan don't, Nathan don't need to do the side antics. He can get in there and do it in the ring. <laughs> uh, do you do you feel like that? That's uh, that's fair for talking to say with, with the being unique. Because so, obviously some fighters are just you know their their kind of gimmick, as it were, or their thing that people want to look at is that they're fighters. Yeah, yeah. But it's little things like that people remember. You know, if you think of Prince Asin, Chris Eubank, you'll always think of the rope flip 
or Chris Eubank jumping over the ropes. It's, it's the first thing you think of. So little things like what Tommy's doing, people always store that in the memory. And like you say, it's a gimmick. People get interest to it. It's very clever, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you got to <laughs> throw his mic around as well. So, though, most, most boxers, they sit there, yeah. And like, if you get asked a question, they can't open their mouths at the end of the day. And if you can't open your mouth in this game, it's, you're, not, you're just going to get you know, swept to the curb. Like you, you ask a boxer, and you say, how was training camp? You go, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Training went well. They, they can't give you an answer. But if you ask me a question now, I can give you an answer here, and I can tell you more than you, you bargained for because I, I know how to speak and I can conduct myself properly. How was training camp? Training camp was very well. I did about 45 rounds of sparring. I did about 20 rounds on the bags. I did, um, I think I did 25 sit-ups on Monday. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that, do you know what I mean? A couple of press-ups, I don't know. How was yours? Uh, not as hard as Tommy's. <laughs> <laughs> not as hard as Tommy's. Uh, Come in, punch the bag a bit. Went out, yeah, I did. Went out. <laughs> How do you find the press conferences and things? Do you get... Do you ever get nervous with the public speaking? You go out and beat someone no. up. Yeah, no. You've no. got to talk in front of people. Uh, different. Truthfully, I much prefer to box and do the press conferences and stuff. But no, I don't get nervous or anything. You know, uh, it comes with the territory. It comes with the job at the end of the day. You've got to, like Tommy was saying, you've got to try and sell yourself, promote yourself and stuff. And if you've got a good tongue in your head, it's half the battle. It really is. Well, and speaking of learning things from, from Tyson coming in here. Uh, well, no, there's, there's, he, the, there's, the, there's the master of it all there. Come on. We're having Ricky. As your uh, as your trainer, he must have a few stories, doesn't he? Of, of those huge fights that he was in, does he have a few lessons that he says, right, don't do what I did it? Yeah, he has a, he has a saying, do as I do, not as I um, no, do as I say, not as I do. That's that's Rick saying. So uh, you'll have to go off that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, lads. It's been a pleasure talking to you both, and and best of luck in Leicester. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. You'll see me in a couple of weeks. March the eighth. Ninth, I thought. Ninth. At Royal Albert Hall. I'm, lo I'm looking at a man behind the camera who also doesn't know. Let's, let's edit it to be the right day. Match <laughs> day.